What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Brontosaurus's favorite nerd. Today, we are looking at the Hasbro Sludge. Once again, these are on loading me from John Garringer, and I finally got time for them. So I'm anxious to knock out these last couple and get into the combine mode. He comes with a gun. Decent enough sculpt, no paint, as we've kind of come to expect. As you saw, he holds it just fine. It can plug into the back of his wings, his forearm, and his chest. Y you know this is supposed to be a joke, right? You can also peg the gun backward in dinosaur mode, or on the back hips, or using those same wing pieces. And he comes with this that we've already talked about in the slug or slag review, so it's the same exact thing. It can plug into his forearm, he can hold it, it can plug into his back, and power armor for his chest. You have the armor pegged into the back of the neck on dinosaur mode, or the back hips, but it's a little heavy, so there's a tendency to flip, flip flop, or this piece. Let's talk about the figure. Once again, the head sculpt looks good. We went with white eye paint, which is a strange choice, but that's what we went with. I mean, yellow, did I say white? What is wrong with me? Silver paint on the, head, on the face and on the crest. The head is on a swivel, so nothing up and down. Shoulders are ball pegs. Same that we've kind of come to expect, up to there and around. Bicep swivel, single hinged elbow, get you 90 degrees, wrist swivel or hinge up and down due to transformation. And we do get some black paint on this guy on the forearm, so that's kind of nice. And then black paint on the chest and the Autobot symbol and a little deco down there as well. So no issues there. The wings do articulate on hinges back and forth, so that's fine. T-joint and ball joints for hips with a waist swivel. I, I'll be honest with you, I'm never crazy about, it just came off the swivel, I'm never crazy about when they do the waist swivel cut in the middle of the pelvis piece, like I always think it looks a little silly, but that's how they did it. We have black paint there as well. T-joint and ball joints for hips, little limited, get you out to there, forward and back to there, thigh swivel at the bottom of the ball uh, socket, single hinged knee that gets you shy at 90 degrees so that's a little unfortunate and then nothing for the feet as we've kind of unfortunately come to expect and as you've kind of come to expect feet engineering wise we're kind of starting to dip into the similar wells so you can fold the hands back into the forearms this piece this flap opens up here that allows the dinosaur head to come over top and connect down swivel the brontosaurus head around Close up the rib cage. Sort your arms. And then on the back, get these tail pieces out of the way. They hinge up and swivel down. Rotate these pieces here all the way up. They'll help with stability in robot mode, but you need them out of the way for dinosaur mode. And then swivel the waist 180 and fold. You can connect these, I believe. And then go ahead and peg those in, bring the tail around and up, and around and up. I'll get them cleaned up, we'll take a look at them. And it's kind of fine, you know, there's there's no real issue per se. It's just, I, I don't like this heavy use of translucent. I'm sure it's just a matter of what they could fit on the sprue, but it's just an awful lot. Uh, I don't mind it so much on the tail and in the G1 homage with the head and so forth. Like that doesn't bother me. It's just all. It's just the amount of translucent used for the for that back leg is just off putting to me. Uh, additional articulation. You get this hinge here or swivel rather back and forth, and nothing for the ankle. That's a bummer. Same for the other side, and then the tail is kind of locked. You do get the mouth that opens and closes. And then you can swivel the head a little bit, too, for a little extra. And you can untab that if you so prefer. And if you just turn the head around, it'll help hide that, you know, if you do decide to break the mold to kind of do that. So, you know, fine, I guess. All right, so we're going to fold the legs down. Once again, there's a little notch there that'll kind of hold tension on the, the hinge here. Take these, bend them back, and that will plug into the sides. Bend to the elbow. There's a peg there that'll that'll clip in or tab in there. And then you want to bring this whole piece here that also takes the flap that his head is on. Flip that around, and then you can actually turn this around so his head will face forward. And bring out the combiner port. Flip the tail up. And there's the leg. And then for arm mode, we're just going to untab the tail, spin it out of the way. You might have to undo some of the leg in order to get it out of the way. 
untab the back, spin these around, and then you can bring the tail back together and fold it down to cover that area. That's where the hand plugs in. Bring these and peg them back in. Bring your combiner port down. This, this actually, I didn't mention this, but this does tab in there. Uh, it's not the best connection in the world, but it is there. And then you can have the head like this, or of course, the other way, depending on your sensibilities. So I, I hate to kind of sound like a broken record, but it's pretty much business as usual. The same sort of problems and the same sort of bonuses. No feet articulation, limited articulation for the dinosaur, but this one actually works a little bit better than most. You know, we still have tons of hollowness and stuff. That's a problem we kind of always seem to face, but great face sculpt and you do get a lot of articulation and it probably would have worked better for a Voyager, especially Sludge, who in my mind was always the biggest. So there you go. I, I will say, like I'm trying to come up with something different to say for each one, but it's not, it's not easy. But what I can say for this one is, is that like, I think that the best option for the Chug Shelf are the Toy World ones. Not if you're gonna combine it, because the combiner isn't very good at all. If you're gonna combine it, I would go the G Creations route. But the Toy World ones just have that kind of classics aesthetic to them with a fair amount of G1 flair and they're built fairly well. So something to kind of put in your toolbox if you're interested. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. So I missed the surface. So let's talk about the issues you're experiencing here recently. I mean, the, the reviews are, are, they're still going, Doc. I've kind of, you know what's funny? I've kind of switched up how I've been doing business a little bit recently because it got a little stale to me. It got mm. a little formulaic. Mm. So I started switching it up. So your so styles has evolved. I'm trying to yes. add a little pizzazz. Mm. Get kind of get to the nuts and bolts. Mm. You know, and people have been saying that I'm phoning it in, mm. and it's not that I'm phoning it in. The editing is actually taking more time. Mm. But it's just that I want to. I want to get it going. I want to get like let's get into it. Let's get it. Like it's the same thing. Like how I said, let's let's not talk about the box. Mm. Let's not talk about the box art. Let's you know talk about. You good? Let's talk about the the figure immediately. Mm. And eventually, I was like, you know, well, let's just get let's just get right into it. You know, and, and I, I want to move even faster. Let's go through the accessories. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right. You know, it, it just kind of seems very distracting. I mean, this is a, a this isn't a professional work environment. Absolutely. Really. You know, it's, it's you, a, this is something. Dude, he's scratching me with his toenails. Literally scratching an itch that doesn't exist on my face. And his, does that make you feel uncomfortable? With his, it's right by my mouth. Right this second. Some would say that your head is positioned near his foot. Can you tell him to stop? Yes, no. Yes, yes. I mean, it's unreasonable. It's unprofessional. And quite frankly, it's. Not on my hand, dude. It's unwelcomed. I feel like he could grab my robe if he wanted to. What's what's problem get yet? Is there? Is there a I feel like I am a guinea pig in some f***ed up plastic tunnel right now with feet and man buns. That, sir, mm. is a bun, like fresh breakfast pastries. Don't get shy now, moving your foot away. Am I gonna have to it? Ah. Can I be honest with you? Mr. Scarface, this is a place for honesty and safety. The whole not letting me in on what you're saying is making me extremely uncomfortable. Oh, Mr. Scarface, I can tell you that there's nothing here for you to feel sensitive about. I'm supposed to be able to express myself freely here, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. There's something else I'm feeling a little uncomfortable with. Oh, well, this is great. Let's dive right into it. Let's get, let's grab it and analyze and see where we're at. You, you've been pretty critical of my reviews in the past. Oh, Mrs. Skullface, they're wonderful. Innovate. I'm not sure if I totally believe that, Doc. Mm. Can you tell me, and I'm not sure if this is some sort of, I know that sometimes you're into the experimental therapy. Mm -hmm. I need it to be a little bit, just a, just a little. Can you tell me why? You have a painting of Ben's collectibles on your wall? Such an engaging piece, don't you think? Look, I think Ben is a very kind person. Handsome, handsome man. 
And I, I think it's luxurious, a, beautiful beard. It is a beautiful beard. Mm. I don't think anyone would deny the power of Ben's beard. Mm. But I, I feel like you're just mm. you're waving mm. other YouTubers with. Oh, um, Mr. Skullface, don't be so. More successful YouTubers. To uh, be, there was that time that you sent me a Christmas card, and it just had Ingo and Piao, and it said <laughs> "Merry Christmas, BFFs forever." Which I wanted to tell you, that's best friends forever, forever. Mm. 